How y'all doing? I'm Chris. You are watching Nature Here and Now. But check out what I just found. See this awesomeness right here? Nature Here and Now. So these animals are really cool and I almost never find them north of Delaware. So I'm really excited to find this beautiful male. And uh, you know, these animals are part of the rhinoceros beetles and farther south you get some pretty big ones, right? The reason these are called ox beetles is because they're, well, they're really strong for their size. I mean, they can lift many times their own body weight. And I'm pretty sure that that's mainly for male to male, you know, combat where they kind of wrestle each other and flip each other over and the winner gets to you know keep the territory and mate with the female should there be one there um, now these are really cool this one here is actually considered a minor ox beetle and I'll show you in a second but the reason why it's called minor is because the horns on this individual are a little bit smaller the major ox beetles their horns are really long you know and the horns are actually coming off of the pronotum, which is this area just before the head, okay? Um, now, when these beetles breed, uh, the female will lay the eggs in like either rotting wood or leaf litter and stuff like that, and the larva will feed on, um, you know, decaying tree roots, decaying wood, and even some of the juices and stuff of the tree roots. And once they're big enough, they'll form a little pupil chamber, usually within the wood or the soil, and they'll pupate and they come out as adults when everything's done, similar to moths and butterflies, right? As adults, they'll feed sometimes on nectar, they'll feed on fruits, they'll feed on plant juices and all that kind of stuff. These beetles are very mild mannered, but I usually only see them at night, sometimes, you know, even though they're very round and robust looking, they fly fairly decent and you usually find them at night, maybe around, you know, lights and, you know, flying through the woodlands and stuff. And it's pretty impressive when you see one of these things flying by because it sounds like a, a C-31 Hercules or something. They sound like that, actually. <laughs> um, which is kind of appropriate because I consider these the trucks or the bulldozers of the beetle world. They just kind of truck along to the landscape. If they're crawling along the leaf litter or the forest floor, they're just kind of bumping into things and pushing any sticks or twigs right out of the way. They're just like little tanks driving throughout the landscape. Believe it or not, they actually make wonderful pets because they're really easy to care for and you just feed them some fruit or beetle jelly, uh, which you can get at pet stores and stuff, or you can make your own. Um, in fact, I like to use old bananas, a little bit of sugar and honey mixed together, and uh, heat that up a bit, and then you let it cool. Uh, the female usually lays the eggs in burrows within the soil. Once the eggs hatch, the grubs or larvae will be kind of like kidney-shaped or little, you know, crescent-shaped things and they'll be feeding on tree roots and decaying roots and all that stuff and they just stay underground for quite a while feeding on all of that. Like I said, these are called ox beetles but they really resemble a rhinoceros and it's very appropriate because they're part of the rhinoceros beetle group. Looking at their front legs, you can easily see they're, they're well adapted for digging. I mean, they're pretty good at moving substrate out of the way as they dig farther down. But their head and thorax, or pronotum, is also kind of designed like a plow on some species. Except these ones. Pretty sure the horns get in the way. It's easy to see why they're called the smooth ox beetle because their exoskeleton is like polished armor. I mean, this thing is so smooth, it, it kind of reminds me of the patent leather beetles or the horn pisalis beetles also known as best beetles in case you're wondering. Again, these beetles are vegetarians and they're generally nocturnal in behavior, but as you can see here, you can sometimes find them during the day. Obviously, you can find them in parts of New Jersey and parts of Pennsylvania. Anytime I find them, they tend to be in sandy habitats, um, you know, with a lot of pine trees and sandy soils, almost like a deserty or Pine Barrens type environment. And, you know, 
obviously they burrow and stuff a lot, so they really love burrowing and digging into that sandy substrate. And I'm pretty sure their, their range is from like Texas all the way east to Florida, and as far north as like Boston, I think. Um, but I usually don't find many of them north of Delaware or, uh, you know, Cape Henlopen. And amazing little beetles. Now, they, these beetles don't bite. Um, they're not aggressive at all. They're actually pretty friendly and easy to handle. But some people can be thrown off by their tarsi or the little hooks on their feet. Um, and they might think they're about to get bitten or something. But those are just the hooks on their feet. All beetles have them. In fact, almost all invertebrates have them. Or insects, anyways. And uh, that's how they walk around. But I've seen people really freak out thinking they're about to be bitten or pinched. And it's just their feet. Now, if you look at their underside, which I'll show you a close-up of, it's got this interesting little sheen to it, almost like a mirage. And that's from tons and tons of tiny little microscopic hairs covering the undersurface or the ventral surface of the animal. Um, again, the upper surface is nothing but completely smooth exoskeleton. And if you look at their back here, if I can do this, sorry little guy, so hard to hold on to. If you look at their back here, right, those are the elytra. And like most insects, they have two pairs of wings. But on beetles and, you know, coleoptera, their first pair of wings have turned into like a hard protective shield um, that covers their, their soft, fragile second pair of wings that are folded up beneath that, you know, the elytra. Um, so, the elytra on beetles is actually a highly modified front pair of wings. And uh, so they open up like a little machine, <laughs> and then the rear wings will unfold and they take flight. And like I said, watching one of these things fly by, it's like hearing a, a Chinook helicopter with the dual rotors come soaring by overhead. I mean, one of these goes by, you're going to know it. Like many beetles, ox beetles are obviously great diggers, and I guess they have to be since they spend so much time creating and living within burrows. They gotta be good at digging, right? I mean, that'd be like a fish that can't swim. Although, there are a few that can't swim very well. And then you've got that giant sunfish in the ocean. That just defies all sorts of nature right there. Anyways. In some cases, they also play host to little uh, pseudoscorpions, which will actually go around on the beetle and, you know, feed off of some of the mites or any other pests or parasites that might try to infect the beetle. So they're kind of like the, the wagon train of the beetle world. Rolling, 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 keep those wheels turning. I don't know how the song goes, just roll with it. If you're sitting there assuming that it's just the males to have the horns on them, well, you're right. Um, that's exclusive to the males. Um, they use them, one, to kind of impress the females and get a date. I should try that. Um, but also, they're predominantly used for male-to-male -male aggression and settling out disputes. Um, the females, it's, they're kind of like little rounded bumps. And sometimes the females could be quite large um, like many invertebrates, the females are often larger than the males. But in this case, I've seen larger males than I have females. And farther south, the males could get pretty large, and those horns can get fairly long, which is amazing. You know, come to think of it, these are more like the bulldog of the beetle world than the ox. You know, like a little British bulldog. <laughs> That's how I see it. They kind of act the same. A little friendly, look all tough. I love these, these ox beetles. Any of the rhinoceros beetles really, really fascinate me. And if you happen to live, you know, farther south, like in Florida or something, you're no stranger to some of the giant beetles that can be found down there, like the Hercules beetles and whatnot. Just absolutely phenomenal creatures. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you find one of these ox beetles yourself or any rhinoceros beetle, fret not. They're friendly individuals. Um, they might look all big and scary. The horns or giant claw-looking things they've got at the front, that's just for like wrestling with other males. 
Um, maybe some of the stag beetles can actually pinch you. Uh, it's not always as bad as it looks, but sometimes it can hurt. These ones obviously don't have giant mandibles. They've just got like, they're like a rhinoceros. And they pretty much move around like a rhinoceros too, although not as fast. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, definitely hit like. Um, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because it tells the algorithm that you like my content. It helps me to get out to places like this one and film videos like the one you just saw. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris. I'll see you somewhere else. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just trucking along. I'm walking here, I'm walking here, looking for food. Oh, girlfriend would be nice too. That'd make my day. <laughs>